Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be showing you how to replace a residential package unit. Now this is a very easy process. I feel like anyone should be able to do this and save potentially three to five thousand dollars. The average range for a residential heat pump package unit is about seven to ten thousand dollars according to some people that I've asked here in the Tennessee area. Um, we're from Utah so we don't see a lot of these but here in Tennessee they're on pretty much every home and so you can save a lot of money by getting your equipment from Alpine Home Air and doing this project yourself. So we're going to walk you through the whole process and show you how to do this from start to finish. The best part of this video is that the homeowner is really in need. They're going through a rough time right now and so this whole project all of this is completely free of charge so wait till the end of the video when we get their reaction. All right so this is the package unit that we're going to be replacing today. We've tried to get this going temporarily but the compressor is just locked up on it and uh, it just it, it's needing too much work to be repaired this is an older American standard unit and if you've never seen one of these package units they basically just have our return and supply ducts under this what's called a dog house and then we just have our conduit going around here so it's quite straightforward in doing this process um, we're just going to disconnect all of the electrical, of course, making sure it's dead first. We're going to take this sheet metal off, get our ducts disconnected, and that's pretty much it. This is our new Blue Ridge um, unit, and I wanted to show you how it's kind of packaged here. It was really packaged well. We had a big box. We have these corner pieces, and um, yeah, they, they shipped it really nicely. Nothing got damaged. So basically the same footprint of our old unit. And then we also got a foam pad. So this looks like concrete, but it's actually um, just foam. And these are very durable. They last a long time. So we're gonna see what we can do about getting this put under our new unit. So for starters, we have our breakers turned off. Now this is gonna be a true DIY. We're just working with the tools that we have. I haven't shipped any tools here. So you'll notice I normally have a Malco reversible bit on here, but we just have a regular standard bit. So we're gonna take this electrical panel off and see what we got in here. All right, so now that we have this panel off, we can see our main connections here. So we have our ground wires going to this block. And just like a split system, we'll have two wires going to the main contactor. So those are our two 120 lines. We'll remove both of these lugs. Now, normally I would advise using a voltmeter to check and make sure that there is no juice to this, or you could use a hot pen and do the same. Um, we have our breaker turned off, so we should be all right. I've yet to see an instance where we had power, even though we turned off the breaker or pulled the disconnect. So we're gonna remove those two. And then in here, I believe is where our, yes, so our connections for the um, heat strips are down here. So we're gonna disconnect these, that, and get this all pulled aside from the unit. And the thermostat wires as well, we will do the same. One thing I recommend on these two is just make a note of what wires are going where, take a few pictures, and that way we can connect them exactly how we disconnected them on the new system. All right, so we have our thermostat wire disconnected, our heat strip wiring, and our main um, 220 voltage for the compressor and the fan all disconnected from the unit. So the last thing we have to do is disconnect this doghouse. Super easy, just these quarter inch uh, zip screws. And then it looks like this was just caulked. So we're gonna fix that. All right, so this is what we got. So everything looks pretty good in here. We're just gonna take our tape off of the insulation Looks like they just had oh, some sort of duct tape here. All right, so we got both of these disconnected. So this unit is fully off of everything electrically and for the duct work. So we're gonna slide this off and then back our trailer in and get this slid on.
All right, so we have our unit off of this pad. You'll notice that these are kind of horizontal. They're the right size, 12 by 14, but our new unit is vertical. So what we have to do is just take these off the flex, rotate them, reseal them, and then we should be golden. Now we're trying to determine if we're gonna try and remove this pad to put our new one in. This one's kind of sloped, but it's real concrete, so it's gonna be kind of a pain. So we could probably set the unit right back on here with the metal, um, the this thing underneath it and just leave it there. Maybe just lift this up and, and level it out. Now, as far as this concrete pad, we decided that we're gonna reuse this. We'll have about a one inch overhang on each side, which is totally fine with that metal bracket on the bottom. And we've got this leveled out. It's just slightly this way on purpose so that that drain will go that way. And then we lifted it significantly um, this way. It was really sloped this way. And now we're level there. So we're good to go. We'll get this pad cleaned up. We'll get that other one permanently attached and taped, and then we'll be ready to put this unit on. I'm gonna cut this. Quick bend. Okay, so initially we thought that the old squared arounds would work, but these are a different size, so we decided that the uh, squared arounds that you can purchase with the package unit, we purchased these or had them sent with this kit. So this is how they're going to be oriented, and they're going to be a lot easier than trying to fabricate the other squared arounds to mount, and they're easy enough to replace. So we took those ones off. We're just going to do the same thing attach our flex to here, run some screws in it, tape it, and then we'll push our unit up against it and just zip screw it right on, just like that. So the easiest way is just to push, kind of roll this flex back, and then we'll pull it back when we're ready. And then if you haven't worked with this flex, it's pretty easy to work with, but you don't want to cut this metal with snips. You want to use something that's made for cutting because this is pretty thick stuff. And then the actual material you can cut with a razor knife. And uh, it's pretty easy to work with. So just slip it over this lip, kind of use your nail to push it over that lip using the wire like that and you want to have a couple of runs of wire onto the the, uh, the collar as an extra measure there just want to make sure that you get it all the way on and then wherever this curb is or this little bump here at the end that's where we're going to run a screw in to make sure that this doesn't pop off. So we're just going to take and go right up against the metal. Just like that. So that's never going to come off. And then in addition, we're going to tape that. So we'll do a few of these all the way around and then we'll tape it up. All right, so those are ready to go. We'll just slide our unit over and then we'll start making our connection with our zip screws. All right, so we have our unit pushed up to where we need it. So we're gonna go ahead and fasten these. So this one's ready to go. Okay, so we're just gonna run some screws in on both sides and then we'll start taping and get that sealed up. Okay, so this is the flashing kit that we got. And for whatever reason, it had these bent up and then there was another 90 going that way. So we bent those flush, 
So this is going to go against the siding. That'll be our top. This will be our top piece, and this will go against the building. And we didn't have a break. And what you could do is you can use a pair of these. And what we actually did is we shoved it in the trailer right here and just used this wood kind of as a break to bend this and it worked really good. So what we're going to do now, everything is taped at the unit. I'll show you what that looks like. <clears throat> so all the insulation is taped all the way around to this uh, squared around here. So we're going to put our side pieces in and then hammer that top piece in those little grooves and then we'll get it attached and sealed up. Alright, so we had to cut for this metal base. We cut a little bit there. We're going to seal all of this up after we install it. So we'll just kind of hold this in place. We're going to tap this joint in right here and then that'll give us the depth we need and then we will permanently attach it here and we'll seal everything up. Now over here, we don't necessarily need to put Tapcons in. We could if we wanted to, but just sealing this up is totally fine. I don't have any issues with just going that route. But again, if you want to use Tapcons, that's fine as well. So hopefully we'll be able to cover up that joint there at least. And uh, that's gonna look nice. All right, so we've got our cover here, all silicone and everything. Um, everything turned out really good, so we have silicone on both sides. I think it turned out really nice there. Um, and then we have our electrical basically just running to the existing uh, ports. So this is our electrical for the compressor and the fan. And this is a heat pump, so whichever it's heating or cooling, this is going to power the fan and compressor. And then this larger gauge wire that went to our old heat strip will go to our accessory heat strip that we'll put in here. And we bought this separately at Alpine Home Air. So we'll just take this plate off, put our heat strip in, plug it in right here, and then connect our electrical. And then you just kind of have to do what, what you can to make this look good. If you wanted to, you could reroute it with new conduit. Um, in this instance, we're just going to try and make it as look look as good as we can but as long as it's weather tight that's the main thing and uh, we're just going to use some fasteners to keep it attached and that's pretty much it so we'll come back once we have these permanently connected and that's going to be pretty much the last step everything is weather tight out here so we're just buttoning up um, these lines getting them connected inside so once we're ready to start this up we'll come back all right so we got everything fastened there we have this running through with our conduit, so we just have a nut on the back. Contactor is wired in, and this is stubbed through as well as our thermostat wire. We didn't have enough length to run it up here, so we're just gonna extend it with wire nuts and run it through here to make our communication wiring. And next, we're going, we took that plate off, we're gonna place our heat strip in, and this is what that looks like. So we have our heat strips back here, and this is a 10KW, and they're really good about telling you what size heat strips you need in addition as backup heat. If your heat pump quits working, this will take over. Or if the temperature gets too low and the heat pump can't keep on up, this will turn on. Also, while the unit is defrosting, going through the defrost cycle, this will come on so you're not having cold air coming out of the vents. All right, so we got that screwed in to where the letters are upright and the heat strips are back here. So we just unplug this from that um, this loop and we're gonna plug it in right here. It only plugs in one way. And that's as simple as it is to wire up the communication side. And then for these thicker gauge wires, <clears throat> The polarity doesn't matter. One is going to go to one of these legs, one to the other, and then our ground right there. All right, so we are about ready to bump this unit on. Condensate line was super easy, so we just have our P-trap there draining right there into the ground. And we have our thermostat wires all connected. One thing that was a little confusing is there's no G-terminal on the control board. There was a separate green wire that was running into here that was just dangling. And I don't know why they wouldn't just leave it up here, but it made it look like a ground. But if you look at the schematics, this green wire 
right here actually goes straight to the thermostat. And there's no G wire on the control board or a G terminal rather. So we just have W1 for heat. We have common, C for common, R for 24 volts, O is for our reversing valve and Y1 is for cooling. Now we didn't have uh, thermostat wires. This is a true DIY job. We had some extra wires laying around. So we just extended them and matched each one and wire nut and nutted them to the thermostat wire. So everything electrically is finished. We can go ahead and put this panel back on. And I believe we are ready to throw the breakers. Um, this is set for cooling. The last thing we're doing is just making sure that there's no potential for rodents or anything to crawl up under here and into the house or under the AC unit. They have that pretty commonly here. So we're making some little flashing to cover this bottom, but we'll go ahead and fire this up and hear it run. We're up and running. Nice warm air coming out of the top. So we can go ahead and put this cover back on and uh, we'll just button up these holes here at some point, maybe not today, but um, we'll show you once we got everything cleaned up here and what we got blowing out of the vents. About 63 at this vent as well. And then at the thermostat, got 83 degrees. So we've got a 20 degree temperature split. So that's perfect. Well guys, we are wrapped up with this job. We put um, some flashing that we got from Home Depot down here so that zero mice or rodents or anything can get underneath here. I thought it turned out really good. And uh, these were super cheap. It was like 14 bucks for a 10 foot stick of these. So being as this was a true DIY, you know, we have our, our liquid tight strapped up. Not the prettiest thing, but again, as long as everything is sealed and the ductwork is sealed, everything will be totally fine. Uh, it doesn't really matter as far as the aesthetics there. Um, our doghouse turned out really nice. We have everything sealed with caulking so that water can run off and that looks much nicer than what was here before. So I think everything turned out really good. Well guys, we're really happy with this install and the recipient of the charity giveaway is super happy as well. It's an awesome family from Burma. They've been here for several years in the United States, but they have four kids and they're just going through a rough time. And this was a really nice surprise. I tried to document the reaction, but there was a pretty heavy language barrier. So I wasn't really able to document that, but they were thrilled because the quotes that they had gotten were between five and $7,000 to replace this unit. So I hope you learned a thing or two from this video. I think anyone with some hand tools and some DIY experience can tackle this project. Again, huge shout out to Alpine Home Air for sending this product out. If you're looking for a new AC unit, make sure and check them out at alpinehomeair.com. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.